In this video, we're taking a look at this Bosch sliding mitre saw. Oh yes, yeah, stay tuned guys, because it's coming up right now. How's it going guys? It's your main man JB here and I've got a new toy and it's in the way of a new mitre saw. Oh yes. And uh, this is the Bosch Professional Slide Mitre Saw. It is the GCM8SJL version. And uh, I'm really excited to use it and uh, open it up and have a look. So uh, let's get this ripped open and um, check it out. I think I might have to put this down on the floor and pull everything out. But just take a quick look at how this has been boxed and how secure it is. That weighs a bit. <coughs> so, first off, check this out. It's got this rather cool handle which makes lifting it a whole lot easier. Yeah. There we go. So you can actually just lift it with one hand if you're having to lock your van or whatever it is you're doing. So once you've taken the saw out of the box, we've got this clamp. That is a good heavy duty clamp. And nothing in there. And an instruction manual. So there you go. You've got the saw, a clamp and a manual. So I've got it all opened up, packaging off and um, what have you. And uh, let's just run through what we've got on this saw. I mean it's a bit of a monster to be honest and uh, it's pretty cool. I'm really loving it so far. So the lead, it's a 240 plug so I did go for the 240 and not a 110 because I'm not actually using it on a building site. So I've got a 240 plug, nice rubbery lead, that's got to be a, a 2 meter long lead so that's really good. There's nothing worse than a short lead. So in regards to the table, we can, we've got these little catches here which allows us to extend the bed of the saw which is nice if you've got a slightly longer piece that needs supporting, that's really cool. And just lock those back into position there. And actually what I've just noticed on here that you can actually adjust the position of this just by pulling it forward. So if it is sticking out you can just pull that forward and actually push it further down. So that's great. Didn't want that hitting that as we moved it round. And in relation to the guard here, now if you're doing bevels and what have you, then you need to be putting this out the way so you don't crash the saw through the, the guard here. But it does only bevel one way. It does only go this way and then obviously the, the blade's not going to hit here, but why that one's like that as well, I'm not sure. Maybe it's a, a standard base if you've got the double bevel, um, if you can take it the other way perhaps. But uh, what I do like is the fact that these are corded here, so if one comes off you're not actually going to lose it. So I would imagine most of the time then we can just have that all the way in and tightened up but they're nice and solid and they sit really flush with this little bit on the bottom here so actually you could still use it with this bit not on there so we've then just got the handle on the side here which we can undo and I lock that sliding mechanism for a moment and once we've undone that lever on the side there then we can take that down to 45 degrees. So this does only go between 0 and 45 degrees. There we go. So you can actually just stop that and lock it on at any position. So if we want to keep it there then we just push that lever forward and that locks it nicely into position. There are three popular bevel angles on here so if you know exactly what angle you want, whether it's 45, 22 and a half or 33.9, we can just adjust this. So 33.9, put that in position, there we go, it's on the angle. 22.5, done. All the way around, 45 degrees, perfect. And actually we can take it all the way around, and I don't know whether that will go any further, 
yeah, that just goes a little bit further. So we've actually got 47 degrees on here. So move that out of the way and that will go to 47 degrees. Lovely stuff. We'll just put that back to 45 and lock that off. Now the miter function on here is really nice. At the moment it's set at 0 or 90 degrees and if we just loosen this and pull this lever up here we can lock it into set positions and again that really does lock in really tight. So you know we've got a few popular angles on there or mitres on there which is nice but if you don't want to use the set positions as we pull this lever up here we can just push this catch over and that allows you to set it in any position you like. So if you've got a particular mitre that you need to do then you can set it exactly where you want it. That will go all the right way around to 60 and then this one will go just beyond 50. So you've also got this levelling foot here so if you're on an uneven ground we can just turn that and that will actually support that part of the saw. There's nothing worse than a saw that wobbles around so that's nice for levelling. Now if you just want to use it as a chop saw we can lock this off here and then we can just use the saw like so whereas if we've got something wider then we want to use that sliding mechanism we can obviously pull this out come down and along so that's really cool and this is really wide as well so it does give you a lot of cutting depth there let's just take the tape measure and uh, see what that is shall we so that will actually cut about 295 deep which is absolutely brilliant particularly if you're doing things like skirting you've got a really deep skirting that's going to be fantastic if you want to do some trenching on this saw we can just move this to one side here and you can set this bolt to any depth or set the saw to any depth and you can do some trenching out which is really cool so on this machine you've got two extraction points so you can attach your hose your hoover extractor to the back of the unit here and it will actually collect dust directly from the back of the saw up here or actually also along the bottom here so dual dust extraction brilliant stuff when you're transporting the saw you can put the blade down and we push that button in there and that makes it nice and easy to uh, carry. Allen key supplied and stored on the saw for the blade change so uh, if you need to change the blade you've always got the Allen key handy. Got this lovely hefty clamp here as well so this can go in right here or in the other side here which is nice so you can change that it's quick release and it's got this serrated surface to it so you don't actually have to lock this into the hole here it does look like it's kind of set in a slight angle so as soon as you've got any pressure onto your workpiece that does lock up so that's brilliant as soon as that's loosened you can just pull that out that makes up really quick and easy now what I found before with some saws is that once this is down if you did want to clamp a piece here you can't actually get that in or that gets in the way but because we can take these out slightly we could have that in that position there the saw comes down but we can still have our workpiece clamped down so that's a brilliant idea that is that we can still use it further along now this does have a dual start switch which means you can't just start the saw with one button here you do have to push this button in first and then the saw begins now this does have a laser so you can see exactly where you're going to be making the cut on your timber Right, so with everything done, and just going to use it on the chop saw, everything's tightened up, and what we'll do, we'll leave the laser on just to see how well it cuts with the laser and how close it is to the laser. We'll pop this clamp in as well, 
There we go, so we've clamped that on. So that has cut that bit of timber absolutely lovely. I went a little bit slow, a little bit precautious on the first cut, but really sharp blade. But as you can see, the laser didn't quite measure up where it's cut it. So uh, I'm sure you can probably adjust that. It gives you a good idea, but that's a good millimetre away from that red line. So let's just have a go with this bit of MDF, so slightly wider bit of MDF, Once you imagine in this was a piece of skirting. So what we'll do on this one is just open these up. That is a lovely cut, really nice. As you can see, I've attached the extractor to the saw now, so uh, let's uh, do a couple of cuts and see how good this works. That really did work quite well. I mean, thanks to these, this kind of dual dust extraction system, it, uh, it did work really well. There's a little bit down here, but uh, definitely takes away a lot of the dust, that's for sure. Now, after cutting that bit of timber at 90 degrees, let's just see how accurate that's cut that. And that doesn't look bad at all. In the reviews I've read, about this saw. It does say that you can get away with no adjustment straight away but that's uh, that's not bad, not bad at all. Maybe a bit of very very minor adjustment needed but you know you'd be alright starting off with that without adjusting it. So we cut this bit of MDF at 90 degrees so what I want to do now is see how well the bevel works. Now in order to do that and have the saw set here at 45 degrees you do need to take this part of the fence off and you can't just get away with sliding it all the way to the side because as soon as you tilt that over and bring that forward the saw does hit right here so what we need to do is to take this section right off and bring that down to 45 lock it off and then that does allow us to move that along like so. There we go, look at that. That's nice. So we've got a tiny little bit of a rough cut there, but other than that, look at that for 45 degree. That is absolutely perfect. So the last thing we'll try then is a 45 degree uh, mitre cut, and what I've done is locked it into the preset position and then I've just tightened it up and it's completely locked so uh, we'll give this one a go but just before we do I just want to mention how tall these fences are here and that's really good because if you've got a quite a wide piece of timber like this and you wanted to put a 45 bevel on it you could actually get away with cutting it this way rather than setting it up to do the bevel cut um, if I had a lot to do, I probably would do it the other way, but hey, it does give you that option. So these are really nice and tall, which is fantastic. But anyway, let's do a 45 on here and uh, see how that looks. Uh, 
So once again, really nice clean cut. And if I just put those two together, you can just see how well that has cut that. That is brilliant. So the first thing we'll do, we'll just test the 45 to see how that looks. And that looks pretty good to me. That's perfect. So we'll put these two bits together here and put the square in there and look at that, that is spot on, absolutely 90 degrees. So just one more thing to mention about the saw, this is the Bosch Professional GCM8 SJL and it's a 240 volt, 1600 watts and the blade diameter is 216 mil with a 30 millimeter bore. In my opinion guys this is an absolute awesome piece of kit, I'm absolutely loving it and if you want to check it out I'll leave details of it down below in the description box. If you've got any questions or comments guys about this saw then do leave those in the comments box below, that would be fantastic. Hope you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up if you did, that would be awesome and if you haven't subscribed already why not go ahead and subscribe guys, that would be absolutely fantastic. Thanks for watching guys, I'm going to rip it up now and I'll see you on the next video.